You deposit your money into the bank, and then the banks charge you interest to have access to it. My name is Darius. And I'm Carmen. And in this video, we are going to teach you how we took 120000 of credit card debt, and we turned that into cash flow. So before we get into this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you're notified when we post new videos. Mm -hmm. Now, one man's debt is another man's cash flow. And we had $120,000 worth of credit card debt creating cash flow for BBNT, BBVA, Chase, Wells Fargo, just to name a few. And the quote that you said, I think is just so powerful. One man's debt is another man's cash flow. Just take a moment and think about that because a lot of times we tend to look at debt in a negative light because we don't understand the full picture of debt. But if you have the full understanding of debt, then you're always going to be trying to figure out how do you get on the other side. So this is a story of getting on the other side of debt. Right. Because on, <laughs> on top of us creating cash flow, they were also charging, charging us interest, compound interest on a daily basis. Yeah. So we looked at this, our situation, which is the same situation a lot of people have, is if we can't beat them, we join should join them. them. Mm -hmm. So we had to answer, our, answer two questions, first and foremost, and that is how much cash flow on a monthly basis was I giving to them? Mm -hmm. So what we did is we took all of our credit card payments and we put them together and we did the uh, added them all up and that came out to $1,734 on yep. a monthly basis that we were just paying on debt. Mm -hmm. Now, the second question that we had to answer is how much interest am I paying and in not investing? A whole lot of money. A whole lot of money. Because what, what I did is I took the statement that had the longest uh, payoff time, which was 120 months, and I multiplied that times $1,734. And that came out to $208,000. So the next thing I had to do was take the $208,000 and subtract it from what they say that I owe on these statements. Now, that's a big difference between owing $120,000 and knowing that I'm going to have to pay $208,000. The difference is the cash flow that we're creating for them, the interest that yeah. we're creating for them, which makes us the investment. And that came out to eighty eight thousand dollars that I'm paying instead of earning. Now, I really hope that you all were following and tracking what Darius was showing uh, or illustrating, because the idea is when we're just paying our minimum payments or even over the minimum over the minimum payments, we don't realize how much interest is going back to the companies and how quickly it's going back to the companies. We just think, oh, I'm paying 150 here or 100 there and no big deal. But we don't understand the compound effect and how that can significantly bring cash flow to the banks. Mm -hmm. Now, in this video, I want to also point out that we're not at all uh, uh, making the banks villains. We're just exposing a business tactic that you can use um, and hopefully you can get on the other side of so that you can start creating cash flow and generating compound interest for yourself. Right. So let us know what exactly is compound interest. So thank you for the segue. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> Compound interest, uh, so that we're all on the same page, is where you earn interest on top of interest. So let's say we have a principal amount and you start to earn interest on that amount. The compounded rate, what happens is you're earning interest on top of that interest and it cu accumulates. So it's really powerful once you start to understand how compound interest works, where you have interest earning interest. That's where the game changes as far as being able to uh, increase your earning potential because you're not always doing the hard work. The interest is doing the hard work for you. Right. So that's how we get from having $120,000 worth of debt to having to pay $88,000 over the long term. In, in addition to. In, in addition to. Yeah. Yeah. So if we think about the daily compounding is basically the fact that we didn't pay our bill yesterday, we're going to pay a little bit of interest on top of the interest that they just charged us. Yes, exactly. Hmm. Now, when it comes to compound interest, the banks are the master at it. Mm -hmm. Another question is how do what do we use? Like if what financial products? Do what we financial use? products could we use to mimic exactly what the banks are doing when they take our money and then they lend it back to us at interest? at an interest rate. Yeah, well, I have an answer for that. <laughs> um, that answer would be whole life insurance. Ding, ding, ding. For those of you who are new to our channel, uh, we talk all about whole life insurance. And if you're not, then continue to to listen on because we want to make sure that we continue to expose your opportunities to earn compound interest. So the idea behind whole life insurance is that it's one of the top assets that the banks use. And they use it very strategically in a way to help them grow more cash flow. We're not, they're not even looking at it from like, 
a consumer standpoint, right? We're looking at the perks and benefits that the whole life insurance policy can provide in order to earn compounded tax-free uninterrupted growth. And there's really no other financial products on the market like it that will allow you to do what I was just saying. Mm -hmm. So basically, if the banks collateralize my money and I get a loan, so they pay me 1% or however much interest that I earn in my checking or savings account, I give them that money because that's what I signed in the contract when I opened up the account. So when I need money, which is for a mortgage or a car note, which I don't have all that money available. They then take the accumulation of all the deposits, put them together and they give me a loan. Mm-hmm. So basically what you're saying is I can do something similar in with the whole life insurance policy is basically the collateral that I have is going to be my death benefit. Yes. In so that case. so that I'm not getting my money. I'm getting a a loan from the insurance company using my money as collateral, Mm -hmm. similar to what the banks are doing when they give us a loan um, and it's the accumulation of everybody's deposits. It's basically a pool of funds. Yeah. Well, and the idea is this is what we consider the cash value. So with a whole life insurance policy, every time you pay your premium, you have access to capital, which is called your cash value. Mm -hmm. And that's what Darius is uh, explaining, which is uh, where your death benefit is going to be collateralized if you decide to get a loan for the cash value. So the beautiful thing about the cash value and how it grows inside a policy is, again, if you pay your premium, the insurance company is going to allow you to have access to a certain amount of funds. And those funds are going to be determined on your death benefit. I'm not saying they're giving you your your death benefit. I'm saying they're going to give you a small portion of your death benefit to use at your discretion. And the best part about this is, like I said, it's at your discretion. So you don't have to apply for the funds. You don't have to beg for the funds. It's just a simple form that you fill out and you get access to the capital. And the reason why I'm talking about this specifically is when you get a loan, you are not affecting the compounded rate that's growing inside the policy. If you get a withdrawal, meaning you're actually taking the money out, that's going to affect the money that's growing from a compounded rate because you can compare it kind of to like a savings account. In a savings account, if you withdraw money out of your account, that's going to affect the interest that's being earned. Mm -hmm. However, in a policy, if you get a loan, that's not going to affect the compounded rate where your cash will grow. Okay. So we We've established the vehicle that we're going to use similar to the bank and we established the benefit of compounding. Now, how do we get our money into our policy premium? What Carmen and I did is we had to start making minimum payments on all of our debts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what we do is like everybody else, we'll pay a little extra um, on this debt so that we can pay it off a little faster. We'll pay a little extra on our car note so we can pay it off a little faster. What we did is we started making a minimum minimum payments on everything, everything. and then we prioritized our savings. Mm-hmm. So we decided to pay ourselves first. Now, this is very similar to what we do for the banks when we get direct deposits. We direct deposit our money into the bank. And then we make our payments. Mm -hmm. The only thing we did is say, okay, the first payment that I'm going to make is a payment to my savings account so that I can have this money that I can use to grow my banking system. So I had to really establish the benefit and the purpose and the why that we're going to pay ourselves first. And I'm glad that you made that point because a lot of us pay over the minimum amount for our credit card uh, statements or any loans or things that we have. And once we recognize that every time we paid over that minimum payment, not only were we giving the uh, insurance company their money faster in interest, we were stunting our ability to save money. Mm -hmm. And so once we checked ourselves and said, okay, instead of putting 50 here, 100 here, like Darius was saying, let's move all of those extra funds to our savings so that we can prioritize ourselves first so that we can have liquid capital to begin with because we really didn't have much savings. And now this changed things as far as how we could start to put ourselves in the driver's seat of this whole process because we prioritize our savings. So this is interesting because we're programmed as a child to put our money into the bank. And whenever we need money, we go to that same place that's holding our our funds. Mm -hmm. So basically what we're saying is that we need to establish a different system that puts us in the forefront instead of the banks themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the idea between all of this information is, again, just knowledge. When you can apply this knowledge to different financial products that are available at your uh, fingertips, it changes what you can do. So if you want help with this information, then definitely click on the link below. We would love to serve you at The Wealth Nation because our entire team is licensed life insurance agents and we can help you solve this exact scenario through whole life insurance. Right. Now, This brings up a question for me, and I want you to comment below. Other than the bank, who has a better system in place for your money than you do? 
because right now the bank system is to get you to deposit your money into the bank and then get you to pay them interest to borrow your money back. Mm -hmm. So who has a better system? Who has a better system? (laughs) That, that is kind of a trick question, but it's something that's easily for you to figure out. And all you have to do is look into your bank statements and see where is all of your money going. Mm -hmm. So if you can categorize it, upon a certain category or certain buckets, that system or that category is where they have a better plan in place for your money because you're literally just giving your money away. Right. Now, let's start putting our understanding and some of these plans into action. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to leverage our deposits to get a loan. And the deposits that we're going to leverage is paying ourselves first, which we're going to use to um, establish a whole life insurance policy, which we use to establish a whole life insurance policy. And then we use those cash value that is in the policy to borrow at a lower interest rate, which for us was a little less than 4%. And then we're going to use those funds to buy our debt back from the bank, which is at an average of about 20 something percent. So let's walk through this, though, so so that you can see how the process works. So like what Darius was just saying is if we get a loan from our life insurance policy, we access the cash value, the insurance company is going to charge us 4%, Mm -hmm. right? So if we are being charged 4%, what we're trying to do is swap places with the high interest debt that we are currently being charged at the bank. So if we knew that the next payment that we had to make was at 15%. What we did was we took the outstanding balance at the bank and we paid it off with our policy. Let's call it $1,500. If we had a $1,500 outstanding balance with our Amazon card, for example, we would pay that off with our life insurance policy. That way the 15% is gone and now we only owe the 4% back to the bank. Mm -hmm. So now all we're doing is those minimum payments that we were paying to Amazon. Again, for example, if it's $50, if it's $100, whatever it is, we would take those hundred dollars and we would use that hundred dollars to help us pay back the loan to the policy at a four percent rate as opposed to oh and and think about this at a four percent simple interest rate Mm -hmm. as opposed to the 15 percent compounded interest rate now remember our debt with the bank was compounding on a daily basis so what we did is we used our insurance policy which is simple interest over an annual basis to replace it and, and the simple question that you have to ask yourself, like maybe that was a lot of numbers for, for you, you to go through, but the, the question to ask yourself is, do I want to pay 4% or 15%? It, it's that simple. Do I want to pay 4% or do I want to pay 28%? Do I want to pay daily compound interest or simple interest? Mm-hmm. And once we saw those numbers, we said, oh, it's just math. Just swap places. Mm-hmm. And so as we started to pay off one credit card and, and uh, that money started to accumulate back into our policy, and when the loan was being paid back, we would take another chunk of money and throw it at the next debt. Now, if we're tr- paying 28% you know, towards another credit card, we pay that one down and we take those same principal and interest payments that we were paying and we pay it back to the policy and mm-hmm. we keep doing that over and over again. It's essentially like a snowball, but we're just using a life insurance policy cash value. Right. And this is how we start to see the cash flow being created on our behalf because we're purchasing our debt away from somebody else. And so you all know, if you want to see how we did this, we actually uh, listed out in spreadsheet form so you can see it in this video here. <laughs> Thank you very much for pointing that out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of numbers and we didn't want to put a whole, a whole lot of numbers on, on this video today. We just kind of wanted to have a, um, a, conversation. A, a conversation about what we did, because if you're interested about this first, it's about let's have a conversation. Then you can look at the numbers if you want to want to with this video. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to put it in play, give us a call. Right. So what we're able to do is we were able to learn that one dollar doesn't equal one dollar mm-hmm. for us one dollar equal not only uh interest it equal principal it equal um uh cash flow mm-hmm. one dollar meant so much more to us when we're able to earn interest because the one dollar that we put into our system doesn't equal one dollars it equal three or four dollars mm-hmm. and we didn't understand that until we actually saw it in place and so, we're talking about the compound interest exactly right because if you are paying that compound interest to someone else you're never going to see it mm-hmm. and that's why it doesn't really affect you but once you see it coming back your way and you see how the compounding is just stack 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 stacking you're trying to figure out how to get more money into your system so that you could continue to earn the compound interest right now what we did is we took our debt and we turned it into cash flow there's another step to this that's, that's 
as basically bonus because we're physically making these payments back to ourselves because we were already doing it for the banks. Mm -hmm. Now that we have access to these funds and we're still maintaining these payments, we can start investing our cash flow so that we can have somebody else pay the interest i.e. market exposure or real estate. These are opportunities for us to lend the money that was a part of our debt, make this an investment, make this an investment so that we don't have to work as hard for it. Now we're still making a 17, um, $1,735 payment, but we also in parallel have, uh, investments that's paying us interest at the same time. Yeah. So the idea is we took, we did this with credit cards. Now, how do we take the same approach and use it with other investment opportunities? Mm -hmm. Because it's not always just about debt. And this also goes back to those of you who are watching this video who are saying, hey, Darius and Carmen, I don't have any debt. So how do I apply this? So the idea is all you're using when you're investing is a pile of money, right? At the end of the day. So why not use OPM or other people's money to invest? Use your policy, use, use the cash value from your policy to invest. And that way, any money that comes back is going to grow your policy because you're already earning that compound interest inside the policy, regardless of what you do. Yeah, banks do a really good job of having a process that they're allowed to rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. And the only thing we did is we copied that same blueprint and rinse and repeat for our debt. We rinse and repeat for our investments. We rinse and repeat for our needs in our personal lives, we rinse and repeat for loans to other people. Mm -hmm. Now, what this allows us to do is that this allows us to own our own lifestyle. And when we talk about the best part, this when we talk about owning our own lifestyle, <laughs> we're talking about replacing our income with interest earned from our investments. That's when you own your own lifestyle. When you don't have to be the one that's out there working, your investments are out there working for you. So the income that you need to survive comes from investments. That's owning your own lifestyle. And once you own your own lifestyle, that's where we truly feel like financial freedom takes off. Because once you pay yourself first and prioritize your savings, that's going to allow you to have breathing room that you need to be able to move to the next step, which potentially for you could be getting your whole life insurance policy. But the whole life insurance policy does not mean that you have financial discipline, right? So you have to have that discipline going into the process because having a policy isn't just going to solve your financial needs, right? So that's where we had to be really disciplined with this whole approach in making sure that we're making those debt repayments back, keeping it coming, keeping the snowball going so that we can bring all of that money plus the principal and interest back to our own system. And once that money continued to compound, even to this day, it allows us to have different opportunities where we can invest and create additional sources or streams of income for our family just based off of the foundation that we have in place. So if you want help, go ahead and click on the link below. We would love for you to join us in our first Pay Yourself First Challenge. This is where you can take the first step in learning how to replace your income with interest earned from your investments by just joining our 30-day Pay Yourself First Challenge. So go ahead and click on the link below. Right, and if you want to take the second step in replacing your income with interest earned from from your investments, then purchase a whole life insurance policy. Make sure you click on the link below. Remember to own your own lifestyle or someone else will.